ओम ज्ञान तमृंद से ज्ञानाजन शराकया चक्षुमित तस्म श्रीगुरव नम वंदेहुर श्रीयुतपदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सागधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्ण पाद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम गौरकृषे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावतर भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्माद्य तोन्वयादिकृत चाथेसुस्वराट तेन ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कवय मुह्यूय तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विमय यसर्गोषा धाम स्वेन सदा निरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीमह नारायण नमस्कृत नरं चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर स्वस्ति अस्तु विश्व खल प्रसीदता ध्यां तो भूता शिव मिथो धिया मनस्च भद्रम भजता दुक्षज आवेश्यता मतिरप्यतुकी So I welcome all of you to this evening's discourse. Next slide, sir. On death and reincarnation. So before I begin, I want to ask you a question. And the question is that: Is there anybody here who has experienced death? anyone yes or you know anybody who has experienced that nobody yet we are very much afraid of death yes because death actually is the primary fear of human beings actually not only of human beings but all species of life everybody is afraid of death even plants there have been scientific study does done that if you go to cut a tree then tree also feels fearful so although we don't seem to have any experience of death because nobody can really have experience of death because if you have experience of death then you are not there to tell it and if you are present then you are not dead so no one can help 
and yet this is something which we all fear. And all the fears which we have in our life, they are emanating from this fear of death. This is the only fear basically. And the other fears which you have, they are part of this fear. This is actually the only fear that manifests in other forms. Whether you have fear of losing your job or your relation or something else, if you analyze it, it is fear of death because job, house, family, relations, they seem to give you the sense of security, sense of existence. And if you lose them or you have a feeling that you will lose them, then you become fearful. So fear basically means that you have something and then you think that you will lose it. Not that you have lost it, because once you lose it, then you may be in anxiety or worry, but before you lose it, you fear that you may lose it. And interestingly, we don't have experience of losing our life, because nobody has lost it yet, and nobody can lose it. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that we cannot die. That is one thing for certain, that we do not die and we can never die. Nobody can kill. In fact, he says that one who thinks that someone kills or somebody gets killed, both do not know. Both are in ignorance. But this was actually the very beginning of Bhagavad Gita because Arjuna also had this fear and he came on the battlefield of Kurukshetra and he saw that he has to fight with his own relatives. So he became full of anxiety, fear. In fact, he became very dejected. He did not want to fight. So all the reason was that he was thinking that if all these people are killed, then I am also killed. Because our identity is related to others. In the present conditioned state, if you have certain identity, then it is not independent of others. If somebody is a father, then his father because he has some son or daughter or children. If the children are not there, then father is not there. So if you are mother, you are mother because of somebody else. And if that person is not there, then your motherhood is lost. So Arjuna's fear was that all his relatives were standing in front of him. There, his grandfathers, grand uncles, maternal uncles, cousins, everybody was present. Whatever relation you can think of, they all came simultaneously. And he thought that if these people are killed, then what is left of me? What will he say to anybody who is he? Because when you try to introduce yourself, you say, I am husband of so-and-so, I am wife of so-and-so, I am son of so-and-so, or I am father of so-and-so. But if any such thing does not exist, then you also cease to exist. So basically, Arjuna's fear was fear of losing his own identity. Although it appeared directly that he was fearing the death of other people. But at the back of his mind, his real fear was for himself. And that is the reason that he did not want to kill them. If these people were not his relatives, you think he will say the same thing which he said? Many times people ask this question that why Krishna is asking Arjuna to fight. Arjuna seems to be a very non-violent person. 
But actually the question is that if the opposite party with whom he has to fight were not his relatives, then will he feel the same way that I don't want to fight? No. He will kill them. He will cut them like a cut zucchini. Because he was very good at that. He was trained to cut people. All his life, that was his training. And he was the best. Sometimes you see some chef how they cut the vegetables so fast. So Arjuna was known as Samya Sachi. Samya Sachi means that he can shoot arrows from both hands. If he gets tired from left, then he starts from the right. And in Mahabharata it is described that he, when he was shooting arrows, then he could not see where his hand was. He will pull the arrow from his quiver, put it on the bow, shoot it, then take another one, put shoot, and he will do it so fast that you don't know whether the hand is on the bow or on the quiver in between where it is. He was so fast like that. It's like when you have a fan and that rotates and it looks like the fin is everywhere. So this, this was Arjuna who was so expert and he was fearing to fight. It's like some chef says that I fear to cut this potato. These poor potatoes, I don't want to cut them. This is exactly that's what he meant basically. So his fear was for himself. So this fear of death, which we don't experience, then you can never experience it. Yet at the same time, it is always there. So why this fear exists? If Krishna says, Na jayate mriyate that we were never born, we will never die. And he is not wrong. So why the fear exists? So this exists because we are identifying with the body and body is temporary. So the eternal Atma enters into a temporary body and that is the beginning of fear. So in Bhagavatam there is a verse which says Bhayam Dvitiya Bhinivesta Shat Isha Dakaita Sadhipariya Smriti Tan Mayata Budhaba Jetam Isha Bhaktiya Guru Devata. So fear comes because we become absorbed in the second. In the Upanishad also it is said, Dutiya Advai Bhayam Bhavati. That the fear comes from the second. So second means the body. Otherwise also fear in this world is because of second. That's why people are afraid. If you don't belong to their sect, then they want to change you because they have a fear of the second. If you belong to the same group, same clan, same religion, then you don't have fear. If you belong to something else, then there is called difference anxiety. You feel different, they are different from you, you are getting to anxiety. So this is what Upanishad says, Dutiyam, Dutiyad Vai Bhavayam Bhavati. That fear comes from the second. So in our case, the second is the body, we are the first. Right? You know the first person, second person, third person in grammar. So I is the first person and then you have second person, you. So you, you means the body. Because whenever you are referring to somebody, you actually refer to the body of that person. So when we identify with that body, then fear begins. And those who do not identify with the body, they do not fear. So this fear of death we have because of the identification with the physical body. And as long as we have this identification, then fear will be there. And then to get security, we do all kinds of things. Like you have life insurance, you have a personal doctor, 
go to gym, don't earn our money, bank balance. This is all because of that fear only. But we do not understand that fear is not because body will die, body is dead now also. Body is not alive. Now also it is dead body. It is we who are alive and by sitting in this body, we make the body alive. Yavat Sanjayate Kinchit Sattvam Sthavar Janam Kshetra Kshetra Gisan Yoga Tad Vidhi Bharatarshan So this body is a combination of Kshetra and Kshetra Gya. Atma and the dead body, which is matter. But when we think that I am only the body, then the problems begin. And then we seek the solution outwardly. Then we think that the solution lies somewhere else. So we don't find solution anywhere. We keep searching for solution in the wrong place. But the solution does not exist then. There was a man, he was accustomed to going to bar. So every day after the job he was single, didn't have much to do at home. So after job, what to do at home? So he will go to the bar, drink, then come home, sleep, eat something and sleep. So one day it was Friday night. He was late in the bar because he didn't have to get up early. And he drank too much. So when he came home, he was already tottering. Not able to walk straight. Then he was trying to open his lock in the front door, but his hands were shaking because of too much drinking. And because of shaking, the key fell down from his hand. And when he fell down, he jumped somewhere and he could not see it. So he was searching, he could not find, there was also darkness there. Outside on the road there was a lamp post. So he went there and he started searching the key there. So he was searching, searching, obviously he did not find because there was no key there. He had a neighbor who was a bhakta. So bhakta had the habit of getting up early in the morning. He had the habit of going to bed late. So he woke up early morning, through his window he saw his neighbor and he said, what is he doing so early? Because that's the time for him to go to bed. So he was very curious, he came out. And then he saw that he is searching something, so he asked him that, what are you searching? So he says, oh brother, I dropped my key. So the Bhakta was a nice person, he thought, let me also help him. So he also started looking for the key, but he could not find because there was no key there. So after some time he asked this man, that, where did you drop the key, how did you drop it? He says, well, I was trying to open my lock and it fell off my hand. So he said, but your lock is there and you are searching it here. So he said, yeah, it fell down there. He says, why are you searching it here? He said, because it is dark there. <laughs> How can you search in dark? He says, what question are you asking? Don't you have this much intelligence? If you, if you want to search something, you need light. Light is here. That's why I'm searching here. So he's searching the key there, but he's not going to find it because that's where not the key is. So in the same way, we have a problem of fear, of anxiety, of stress. Everybody has it. No matter, you may be a PhD, you may be a scientist, you may be a very rational person, you may be a literate person, but fear is there. So why is that? Because we are ignorant and we are searching for the solution in darkness or in the place where the solution does not exist. So it may seem convenient to search it there, but you will never find it. The solution you have to find where the key is. So the key lies in spirituality. 
but people think that is difficult. So that is not difficult. It is that you have to make an effort for that. So the fear of death and this question about death always arises in the mind. Sooner or later, especially if somebody dies in the family, then we become very philosophical, especially Indian people. When somebody dies, everybody is a philosopher. Everybody starts lecturing the person in whose family somebody has died. And then when somebody dies in his family, then he comes and lectures. So we are lecturing mutually and not understanding. So we have to go to the root cause of the problem if we want to find a solution. There was a very great saint in India. You may have heard his name. His name was Goraknath. Heard of Goraknath? No? You heard of Gorakhpur or Gita Pras Gorakhpur? Gorakhpur is a city in Uttar Pradesh, very close to Nepal border. That is on the... You have heard of Gorkhas, Nepali Gorkha. You heard? It comes from that one. Because the Goraknath temple is there. So this says, he was a very great yogi. If you are familiar a little bit with Hindi, in Hindi there is a word called Gorak Danda. Anybody knows the word Gorak Danda? No? I don't speak Hindi. So it derives from the says Goraknath. So one day when man came to Goraknath and he said, Maharaj, I want to commit suicide. So Goraknath said, why? He said, because I am so frustrated with my life. He said, yes? He said, yes. And he said, okay, go ahead. Do it. I want to see how you commit suicide. So the man was very surprised because he is coming to a sadhu and he wants to find maybe he will give some solution to his problem. But the sadhu said, okay, go ahead, commit suicide. So he says, this is a very strange man. So he asked him that you are very strange. So Goraknath said, why? He says, because I am saying that I want to commit suicide and you are saying, go ahead. So Goraknath said, what is wrong with that? You want to do it, why shall I stop him? So he says, but I went to some other sadhus and they were all trying to give a solution to me. That don't do that, life is important and problems in life, don't commit suicide. But you are a very strange person. So he said, because I want to see how you will commit suicide, because till today I have never seen anybody committing suicide. So he says, committing suicide is not possible for you. He says, the real suicide is, if you really want to commit suicide, you have to come and learn it from me. If you want to kill yourself, he says, I will teach you. Because you don't know how to die. So he says, the death is the death of the ego. And that you don't know. So I wanted to see how you will do it. So he says, strangling yourself and getting out of this body, that is not death. Then you get into another body. Because jatas se hi dhrom mirti, dhrom janma mirtas se cha. Anybody who dies takes birth. We think that death is very inauspicious and birth is very auspicious. That's why we celebrate birthday. Right? But birthday means that you are dead that many years. Right? If it is somebody's 40th birthday, that means he had died 40 years. If he is going to live 100 years, he is dead 40 years. It's not his birthday. He is not taking birth. He is dying. Because as soon as you are born, the death begins. So, birth 
and the person who is born, his death they are born together. Everybody is born along with their death. Mirtu Janma Vatam Vira Janma Nasa Jayati. That your death is also born with you like a twin sister. And wherever you go, she never leaves you. She is always following you. Therefore, no one can get rid of it. No matter how much you try, you cannot get rid of death. Now there is a lot of research going on because they think that if we can replenish the genes in the body with the newer ones, then the person can live eternally. But it is not possible. So, we think that we are celebrating birthday, but we don't think that I have completed this much of my life. I am actually walking towards death. Like if you have to go from here to Durban, so as much distance you cover, that much you are close to your destination. If you have driven 100 kilometers, then you are 100 kilometers nearer to death and into your destination. So people feel very happy on birthday, but they don't see that it is also closer to death. And there is nothing wrong with death, because death is just getting a new body. Body is like a house in which you live. When it gets old, then you will want to leave and you will get a new body. So what is wrong with that? So wrong is because we identify with it and then we become attached to it and we don't want to leave and we become fearful. But if we realize that it is just like a dress, Vasanse Jirnani Yathavi like we gave up some old dress and get a new one, then we don't sit down and mourn, oh my old dress, how can I leave? We don't do that. So in the same way, our bodies, they have to be given up and that's what is called death. Really speaking, we don't die. Death means changing the body. In this body, there is a subtle body and there is an Atma. It's like you wear a dress and then you have underwear or a vest under the dress, like undercloths, right? So you have two layers, you have undercloths and you have outer layer. So similarly, Atma has two layers of body, there is inner body or subtle body or psychic body. And outside, there is the gross, physical, the visible body. So death simply means that you give up the external and you keep the internal. So death means giving up the gross physical body and leaving along with your subtle body and then taking another one. That's what death means. So therefore death and birth, they go together. So therefore this topic of death and reincarnation, reincarnation means rebirth. So we got this particular birth that happened because before that we died. If there is no death, how will we take birth? So if we are celebrating somebody's birth, when some child is born, people are happy, then you should know that some people must be crying somewhere or must have cried because then only it is possible. So that is the duality of this material world. And this continues from one cycle to another cycle unless we really die. Which means that we bring a death to this identification. So that is called moksha. So real death is moksha, 
when there is a depth of identification with the body. Otherwise, body has to be given up when its time is over. And then you cannot delay it even for five minutes. You cannot say that I have some important work to do and then I will die. Now when death comes, then you go, no matter how many important things are there to be done. But the real death is the death of material identification. So therefore in India, when somebody takes sannyas, there are sannyasis, renounced people. So taking sannyas means dying. They actually do their own death ceremony at the time of sannyas. Usually the death ceremony is done when somebody is dead, then his relatives are doing it. The sannyasi does it himself. Because he says that materially I am dead. After taking sannyas, he is not supposed to identify with any of his past material relations, material possessions, material activities, even material name. He changes everything. He changes his dress, his name, his activities. So, materially he is supposed to be dead. That is the meaning of sannyas. And then he has another journey of spiritual life. So then he says that now I am living as myself and not... So that is the new birth. So death and birth, they happen simultaneously. That's why Krishna says that one who dies, the death is, birth is certain. Like day and night, they keep coming and going. So our problem is that we want birth and we don't want death. So that does not happen. It is like a hen is giving an egg. So the person was getting egg from the hen but he has to feed it. So he thought that actually I get the egg from the back side and the front side I have to feed. Why not, why, not, why not I cut it in two and keep only the back part? Then I don't have to feed and I will get eggs every day. But that does not work. If you want the egg, you also have to feed. So, if we want birth, and if we celebrate birth, then death also has to be accepted. Because one is not possible without the other. They are the two sides on the same coin. And they go together. So therefore death and reincarnation or rebirth, they are interconnected. One leads to another. Death leads to birth. Birth leads to death. And death leads to birth. And birth leads to death. So it goes on and it has been going on without any beginning. There was never a time as Krishna says that you did not exist. Natvevaram jato nashna. That there was never a time that you were not there. Or these people. We have already always existed and we will always exist. That is the beautiful thing that we will never die. Body can be given up, but you will survive, you will continue. So your journey will continue from one body to another body, from one birth to another birth. And that another birth, that is guided by your actions in this life. So it is not that in the time of death suddenly you can choose that I will have this type of birth. No, you don't have any choice at that time. But how you lead your life at present, that will decide your next life. But unfortunately we don't do anything for next life, we only remain entangled, taking care of 
this life which means this body and we pay no attention that one day we have to leave this so it is like you go to a hotel and you rent a room suppose you go for some holiday some vacation to some vacation spot and you want to spend 15 days there so you rent a nice room in a hotel you live in that now i don't know anybody who, who thinks or who does that because he is living in this hotel room then he goes to the town he buys nice paintings and he decorates this room right you know anybody who does that or he buys some nice carpet for the room nice furniture right nobody does that why because you know that you are going to get out of this very soon so you don't do that but we do this to the house because we think we will live in this eternal we don't know that we will also get out from this and therefore we become attached to it because we think that this is my house actually it is not your house it has been given to you for loan for some time like somebody loans his car to you you can drive it for few months and then he takes it away so like that this body has been given to you but you are free now how to use it but one day you have to get out of it so instead of thinking that now i am living in this body let me do something for the next program and actually to act in such a way that i don't have to take another birth because taking birth is not some very happy situation if taking birth was very happy situation then the child would be happy to remain inside and not come out why come out in this terrible world you are very safe inside right you get your food don't have to even digest it don't even have to breathe so you just relax but nobody would like to be in such a situation if we say that we will put you in such a situation you will not like that because it is not very pleasurable it is a, like a prison at least in the prison you can walk around there you cannot walk you are very tight so birth is not very pleasurable experience and then taking birth is painful mother knows how much pain it is to give birth to a child so as much pain mother has the child also has that much pain don't think that the child is enjoying it child is also getting squeezed and child actually has the same identity as the mother because they are one unit and now that part is being separated so even it is psychologically painful physically painful birth is a very painful experience child is unable to express it therefore we don't know but actually it is very painful therefore he cries so everybody is crying when the child is when the child born or the child cries so kabir you heard of kabir das kabir kabir one kabir says he he says a very nice thing he says jab hum paida hue sab hase hum hue when i was born everybody was happy like parents are very happy child is born relatives are happy there is sangeet music this distributes sweets he says i was the only one who was crying but baby who is actually taking birth he is crying everybody happy he said jab hum paida hue sab hase hum roye now what is student says kabira aise kar chalo 
हम हसें जग रहे हसेज नाउ कबीर आई यू एक्ट इन योर लाइफ इन सच ए वे दैट वन यू विल लीव एवरीबडी विल क्राई एंड यू विल बी लाफिंग यू से नाउ गोइंग आई एम गोइंग टू द किंगडम ऑफ गॉड आई एम गेटिंग मोक्ष एंड एवरीबडी विल क्राई दैट सच ए नाइस पर्सन लाइफ राइट इफ समबडी इज वेरी नाइस पर्सन एंड एवरीबडी फील सैड बिकॉज सच ए नाइस सेंटली पर्सन लाइट बट द सेंटली पर्सन इज हैप्पी तो देर फॉर इसे कबीरा ऐसे कर चलो हम हसन जग रहे सो दैट शुड बी लाइफ दैट यू कैन क्राइम यू शुड लीव लाफिंग बट एक्चुअली दैट्स नॉट द सिचुएशन पीपल कम क्राइम द लीव क्राइम राइट एंड देन वेन दे आर लिविंग देन ऑल्सो दे आर क्राइम so it's all crying business and still people don't want to give it up if you tell them that come on learn some philosophy learn some sadhana some bhakti then you will be happy he says no i am okay like this so this is attachment this is called attachment once narada muni he came here on bhuloka marti this is called marti loka the land of death because death is only here nowhere else there is death in the upper planets there is no death death happens only here on earth therefore it is called marti loka the planet of death so he saw everybody was suffering you can see that if we think unbiased manner we see that most people they are suffering whether they are rich or poor it doesn't matter different styles of suffering so he was very compassionate on people he thought i should do something so usually people say why god is not doing anything many times people say if i if i meet god I will be angry at him and ask why there is so much suffering. So Narada also went to God. He went to Vishnu, and then Vishnu received him. He said, "What is the news?" Because Narada was the, like a correspondent, getting news from one planet to another planet. So he said, "Well, everybody seems to be suffering on this bhulo ka on earth. Please do something." So Lord Vishnu asked, "What do you want?" So he says, "Why don't you liberate them? Give them moksha. Give them mukti. They will all come here and live happily with you." So he says, "But nobody is interested. What can I do? I already went on earth. I spoke Bhagavad Gita. Nobody reads it. The Hindus don't read it because they have no time." And others, Muslims and Christians, they don't read because they say this is a book of Hindus. So he says, nobody read. What can I do? So he says, no, no, please. That is not true. People are suffering, and if you tell them that you can get moksha, they will definitely come here. He says, I don't think so. So Narada said, let me. Try. So Vishnu said, "Okay, you go, and if anybody wants to come with you to have moksha, then bring him here. I give you this freedom. That you just ask anybody if he wants moksha, and if he says yes, bring him. Don't worry about any sadhana, about any practice. I will liberate that person." So Narada was very happy that now I will go down. And I will tell this good news to people, and then everybody will come here. So he went, and he went to one village, and he says, "Listen, people." So everybody came to him. He says, "Yes." He says, "You want moksha? Come with me." So nobody came. So he was very surprised. He thought everybody will start following him, but nobody followed. So he asked him, "Why you don't want moksha?" So he says, "Well, I have my son. He has to be educated. 
He asked another person, I have a daughter, I have to get her married. So everybody gave some excuse. So he was very surprised in our thought. So now he went to another village, he thought that maybe people in this village have this problem, another one they will not have. He went, same story everywhere. Everybody has some commitment, some responsibility. Nobody was free to come with him. So then he started begging because he felt very embarrassed. What will he tell Vishnu? If he goes back and Vishnu will ask him, so now where are the people? So what will I tell him? So he thought, that I should at least take one person with me. So he started begging that, please come with me, have moksha. So then they got irritated with him. As soon as they see Narad coming, they will walk to the other side. He said, now this fellow will come and pastor us about moksha. So finally he caught one man and he really preached to him. He says, why you don't want moksha, you are suffering your life in the wonderful this that. So he says, well, I have just one desire and if that is fulfilled, then I will come with you. So Narada was very happy. He says, okay, I can wait. So he says, what is your desire? He says, I am just waiting that I get one son so that he can continue the line. Right? We are also very much worried that parampara must continue, the lineage runs, right? Family line must continue. So he says, if I have one son, then I will leave. So Narada says, okay. So Narada went away. He came after one, two years, he had a child. Fortunately, he had a son. Otherwise, he would have said, well, it's only daughter. <laughs> so that's not sufficient. So he came. So he said, okay, now let's go. You've got a son. So he says, come on, Narada, please. I say, karo bhai. My child is very small. I have to take care. And when he grows up, who will he say, Papa? So let him grow up a little bit. When he starts walking, then I will come with you. So Narada went away. And he came after some time. Now the child was grown up. So he's walking. So he says, now you come. So then he says, let him at least go to the school. There is a nice school here in Venezia. So let him go to school, then I will come. And the school people can take care of him. So he went away again. When he came, now the child was going to school. Right? Now he was in school, Sarda. Sarda is an independent school. Now he was studying there. So, like that time passed, then he says, let him get married. Otherwise, who will marry him? So then marriage also happened. And he says, I just want to see the face of my grandson. <laughs> so, like that, the life passed. And next time, Narada came, he was dead. So he says, my God, now I lost my last chance. I was hoping that at least this fellow will come. But he is dead now, what to do? So by his yogic power, he realized that the person has become a dog in the house. He, he became, next life he became a dog. And he was in the same house. Because he is attached to the house, where will he go? So now he is guarding. So he is sitting there, he gets little food. And whole day he is going around with his tongue hanging out, sniffing. So he went to the dog. He says, come on. What are you doing? Do you remember? So the dog said, yes, I do remember. I know you. So he says, let's go. I can take you in this body also. He says, how can I go? This fool is my son. He is so careless that he leaves the home. Any thief can come here. I have to guard it. So if he gets a little mature, then I can come with you. I cannot leave this house like this. How he will survive? So Narada had no choice. Then he went away. Dogs don't live for so many years. Next time he came, 
the dog was also there. So now he was thinking, where did he go? So he traced him. He has become a worm. And he was lying in the gutter outside the house. So he lifted him up. He says, Hari Bhav. <laughs> so the worm looked at him and says, what do you want? <laughs> Why don't you leave me alone? Why are you troubling me so much? What sin I have performed? I made a mistake to tell you that I will come to Vakuntha, to God's abode. He says, I am very happy here. I get so much garbage coming through this gutter. I eat. I am sleeping here. What Vakuntha will do? So finally, he lifted him and by force he took him to Vakuntha. The story is there in Mahabharata. It's not a concoction. So Narada by force because what worm can do, it would be difficult to carry a dog, I can bite him. So he picked up the worm and he took him and Vishnu, he went to Vishnu. So Vishnu said, welcome Narada, welcome, where are the people? So he felt, I have got one worm. So he said, now you understand why people are suffering. So he said, yes. So the problem is that we identify with our body, with our relations, with our possessions and we don't think of who we really are. Because our real relationship is with God. And this is a short period in which we live with our relatives and friends. So you can live but you should know that this is not a permanent situation. And because it is not permanent, so you also have to think of what will happen after this. So this we don't want to hear. If you tell this to people, then they say, what you are talking about? We are happy like this. All these problems, this is part of life. What is big deal about it? So people say that suffering is part of life. What are you talking about, Vakuntra, Moksha, all these things? He said, this is all for Babaji's. So we are Gleastas, we are householder, we have no such need, we have family, we have children. The people have none of these things, so you sing all these songs. So just leave us alone. What do you want? You need some donation, we will give, but you move on. Don't bother us. So this is the situation and that's why we have fear because this attachment is the cause of fear. It is not that we have to negate life. Krishna also lived life. He also had family. He had bigger family than you. He had children. He had more children than you. But he was not suffering because of attachment. And it was not that he was neglectful of his duties. He is telling even to Arjuna not to be neglectful of his duties, right? That is what he is teaching in Bhagavad Gita. He says, you are a Kshatriya and this is your duty. So he is teaching, but he is saying that you perform your duty without attachment. You live in your family. But don't become attached. You always remember that one day you have to leave. And in the past, at least people used to leave when they died. Right? Because there was no divorce. In India there was no divorce before. So if two people came together by the bond of marriage, they lived together for the rest of their life. Now you can leave even before. So there is more reason for you to become spiritual. At least in the past they, they, they lived together and they will say, well, who knows what happens at the time of death we are together. No, but in, now we see that even living people get separated. So think of it. So relations you have, your possessions you have, your job you have, your business, whatever you have it, no problem. 
we are not teaching that kind of renunciation that you all become sannyasis but sannyasis in the mind otherwise people become sannyasi then they create another family bigger than before at least family people have one wife two children and sannyasis they have one ashram here another ashram there another ashram there they have more worries so sanyas is detachment in the mind so you live in family like a sanyasi and that is what krishna teaches in bhagavad gita so then you will not have fear because that is a reality it is not some imagination the reality is that we come together because of some past karma those who are your relatives with whom you are attached now and living together it is because you had some past karma to be together when that karma is over then relation is finished so this is called renanu bandha rena means debt anubandhan means bondage so this is a bondage because of some debt we have mutual debts to pay so we come in this life together in this life also you create debts some people are doing some good to you you are doing some good to others then they have to pay back if they don't pay back in this life then they have to pay in the next life because nothing comes free so we can have all this relations but also remember your relationship with god because he is not going to change your wife or husband will change although indian women they fast karwa chauth right here also they do karwa chauth no they do fasting on this it was last month i think so why do fast they say that we are fasting to have the same husband in next life also so when western woman she came to india and she came to know about this that indian women they are fasting whole day starving so she asked why are you not eating she said well this is this is our fast why are you fasting she said because we want this husband again So she was very surprised that in the West we don't have anything like this. We change husbands, like we change dress, and you want this. You want the same husband? Are you, are you not bored with husband? So the Indian woman says that you people don't understand. You Western woman, no intelligence. He says we are smart. We have trained this man. Now we don't need to train again and again. So we get him again. So this is the trick behind it. So this relation is they are because of our past karma, and they are not permanent. No matter how permanent you want to make them, they are not permanent. but relationship with god is permanent because god is not going to change his post it is not that it is by some democracy that he was elected as god for 5 years 10 years and then some other god will come but god is always god and he will always be in god and he is our real well wisher as they were singing that to me ho mata pita to me to me you bandhu sakatu so it is not just singing singing is nice and you can clap but actually you have to realize this fact so paayo ji mene ram ratan dhan paayo so there is a dhan wealth which you are all trying to earn and you should also earn the inner wealth which will be your own personal wealth because this wealth external wealth is not your personal wealth 
when you earn it, you have to pay tax on it. Right? Anybody who is making some money, some tax you have to pay. Even if you are below the limit of tax, paying slab up to certain pay, you don't have to pay tax. Still you pay tax. You want to buy something, you have to sell tax. So this is always taken away by somebody, but the inner wealth, that Ramaratan Dhanam, that the wealth of the name of God, that is your real wealth, and you should also earn that, especially those of you who have retired. Now leave it to children. Don't worry. Don't think that they cannot survive. They will survive by themselves. Now earn little wealth for yourself because you will be thrown out one day. And then you will have nothing to carry with you. So if you travel, you make a plan that where will I eat, what will I do when I go there. So now earn some money to carry for your travel. You are going to travel soon. So take some money with you. So that is the inner wealth. That is the meaning of spirituality, bhakti. That is what Krishna is teaching in Bhagavad Gita. Because after death, reincarnation is there. It is unavoidable. Unless you become spiritually perfect in this life, then you don't take birth again. Then you get moksha. So if you don't achieve that, then birth is inevitable. No one can stop. Tasmad apariharya trinatam Krishna says, it is apariharya, inevitable. So that is what I wanted to say in brief about death, about reincarnation and how it works, what really death means. So what is the meaning of death? It means you leave the gross body. You don't really die. And body is dead. You have seen dead body. It is the same body now also. Just like you have your car, if you take out the battery, then it is dead. Where is Subhas Bhai? <laughs> so yesterday we had that experience. The battery didn't work. Right? So then the car is dead. So battery, this is the soul, which is like a battery in the body. You take out the soul, the car is dead. Then you can put your key inside, you can turn it, you can press the gas, nothing happens. As long as the battery is there, you are smiling, you are laughing, you are walking, you are talking, remove the battery, pull the wire, finished. So, if you have seen a dead body, you know how it looks. There is nothing. So it is exactly the same body now also. It's like the car without battery. With battery, the same car. But when battery is there, then it works. Then you can drive. Same body, no difference. So death means that the battery is removed. And then battery looks for another body. Then another one, then another one. So this of course is an inexhaustible battery. It doesn't get discharged. And it does not need recharging. That's why Krishna says, Na jayate vriyate vatata bhavita Ajo nityo shashvato yam puranam Na hanyate hanyamane sharire Never dies. It is a special energy of God. This body is a material energy, it is made of matter. And the Atma, the soul, that is spiritual energy. Same energy as Krishna's body. Krishna's body cannot be killed. He is spiritual body. We are also spiritual. So we are actually meant to be with Him. But we are trying to find happiness here. The same thing, trying to find the key under the lamp. 
it will never find it there. So I will stop here if anybody has any question to ask. You understand? Yes or no? Sometimes when you don't understand then also we say yes. Because we feel embarrassed thinking everybody understands and I only don't understand. But the neighbor is also thinking the same. So if you understand then are you going to do something about it? Yes? How many people? Can you raise your hand? So what are you going to do? What will you do? Sadhana Ji. Her name itself is Sadhana. She was born Sadhana. So you have to do Sadhana. So everybody has to do Sadhana. Yesterday, our Prakash Bhai was singing the song. He was saying that Sadhana Bina Jeevan. <laughs> he said that Sadhana Bina Jeevan, the life without Sadhana is useless. That's what he was saying. So it is a nice bhajan. So everybody should understand this, that life without sadhana is no life. So we are intelligent, we are fortunate that God gave this knowledge to us. At least we identify a little bit with Him. He is our God. He is everybody's God. We can feel more close to Him, He gave knowledge. So we should take advantage of it. Otherwise, what is the difference between us and anyone else? And it is not very complicated. At least do little worship, chant the name of God, some bhajan. If you don't know how to sing, just listen to it. Everybody likes to listen to music, right? So listen to bhajan. So as you have bhajan, you also have bhajan. So bhajan is for the body, bhajan is for the atma. So just add little bhajan to your bhajan. Not very difficult. But it will give you good result. Right? And you don't have to pay for it. For bhajan you have to pay. Right? And you have to spend a lot of time to prepare it. For bhajan, free of cost. And not, not try to spend time to prepare. You can start at any time. Our Suez Bhai is doing. So you should uh, continue this. Dheeran Bhai is giving Bhagavad Gita class every, every which day he gives? Every Wednesday? So you should attend this class. It is free. You spend so much time doing so many things which are ultimately meaningless. People sit down and gossip over a cup of tea. Nothing. And discussing cricket, politics, this, that. You know, listen to this. So make use of this opportunity which he is giving to you. So listen to it, have questions, ask. Learn something. It will benefit you. Even in material life it will benefit you. Because in material life also you need fixity of mind, balanced mind to achieve success. So this teaches you that. Otherwise we are in anxiety unnecessarily. For no reason we create anxiety for our mind. So you will become free from that. Because something has to be done in future and we start worrying about it from now, there is no need. You have written an exam or you have given an interview for job, the result will come after one week, so you worry for one week. Why are you worrying? 
what you have to write is already written by worrying it will not change if it it was possible to change it by worrying then ask all the family members to sit down and worry every day for one hour but please come help me get worried so what is not going to help it so don't worry whatever you have done it is done but this are the type of anxiety we create unnecessary anyone after the result has come then is worry why worry after that because it has already come. so there is no need to worry before the result there is no need to worry after the result but we do both so bhagavad gita teaches this how to get this anxieties from your head so that you can sleep nicely you don't need sleeping pills because by taking the sleeping pills your mind becomes weak you lose your memory your chemicals so uh, no questions if there are no question then we we'll stop okay all right thank you for coming and we have another talk tomorrow so if we have time please come thank you jee sir jee sir um before you leave we have prasad sir at the back please pass it um if you want any other uh, information given by us uh, classes in indonesia in florida plus and uh, i think in mongo then then so if you need uh, information on those classes please speak to me at the back please pass it before you leave there's pamphlets on the next two talks at the entrance so please help us out jay shri krishna namaste